Uh, good evening, uh, members of the community, members of the Plainfield uh, Board of Education. As Dr. Mitchell indicated, I will be uh, reviewing and sharing the district's preliminary uh, budget proposal. stuck between slides. Thank you. Uh, starting off with the district's uh, mission statement, the mission of the Plainfield Public Schools in partnership with this community uh, shall do whatever it takes for every student to achieve high academic standards, no alibis, no excuses, no exceptions. Next slide, please. Here's a brief uh, a review or overview of the district strategic goals. As we just heard from uh, Ms. Gwen Thornton, the district is undergoing a strategic planning process. However, there are uh, five strategic goals that currently exist for the district. Uh, goal number one is to improve the learning and academic performance of all students in all Plainfield public schools. The second goal is to improve the recruitment, retention, and development of district staff. Goal three, is to improve the overall efficiency and effectiveness of district school operations. Goal four is to provide a safe, secure, professional, and clean environment for students, staff, and members of the community. And goal number five is to actively engage families and communities in a meaningful, structured, and productive manner that promotes learning and cooperation. Next slide, please. We've been engaged in this uh, budget development process and just like to share with you all exactly where we are right now in this process. So tonight you are receiving a uh, review of the preliminary budget proposal. And the next step from here will be to submit the preliminary budget to the county office for review. The deadline for school districts, uh, type two school districts with the November election, uh, our district, our deadline is March 28, 2022. From that point, we'd like to continue the discussions with the Finance and Operations Board subcommittee. Dates for those conversations are uh, to be determined and should be selected, uh, obviously, uh, with the consultation and collaboration of that committee chair. Next, uh, we will move forward with the public hearing and adoption of the budget. We have a tentative date of April 26, 2022. Uh, that date is important uh, because the state of New Jersey, uh, by law, uh, does not allow any school districts to hold any public hearings for the adoption of the budget prior to April 25th, 2022. And the deadline for the adoption of the budget is May 7th, 2022. So from this point forward, uh, if we were to actually take this all the way to uh, as far as we can in terms of our, our deadlines, we have from this moment forward up until May 7th to formally uh, approve and adopt the district's budget. And again, tonight is just a review of the preliminary budget proposal. Next slide, please. So the budget development process, uh, the, the development of the district's budget is, is not a one-time event. It doesn't just happen during, during this part of the year. We're constantly working to fine tune and develop the district's budget. So as soon as we adopt this budget, we'll start the cycle to work on the, the uh, following year's budget. And it all starts with the submission of the ASSA, which is the district's 
uh, application for school state aid. Uh, October 15th, that's the date everybody's familiar with. We're running around making sure we get all our enrollment figures in. That date is very important for us because those the enrollment on October 15th actually uh, feeds into the calculation that determines what state aid we will receive here for Plainfield Public Schools. So after the submission of our ASSA, we then uh, review the strategic goals, those five goals that I uh, read earlier. And we move forward with an analysis of the district's revenues and expenditures. We did that over the course of uh, four years. So we looked at uh, a four year trajectory on the all expenditures, all revenues, and then we shared that with all of our principals and all of our department heads to give them an opportunity to analyze what their spending had been over the course of that time frame. We then move forward with sharing the initial uh, budget projections, which were developed uh, by the school business administrator and uh, also with the support of my team. A huge shout out to Cynthia Lamb and Jeff Morton, who's, uh, who's here with us this evening. And after the initial projections were developed, we then move forward with budget, budget reviews and meetings with our principals. Those budget uh, reviews allowed us to really have some in-depth conversations and dialogue with our building principals in terms of what their strategies and what their approach, what their approach may be to improve student outcomes in their uh, particular buildings and how they plan on leveraging the funds uh, that they will receive in the upcoming fiscal year. We also have budget uh, review meetings with each department leader. And I will say that I was, uh, I was very excited as we engaged in those conversations because it allowed us to be very creative in terms of solving challenges that some department leaders believe that they may be experiencing and also coming up with uh, creative ways to fund the, the fiscal needs for their departments. We then went move forward with internal reviews uh, with Dr. Mitchell and the cabinet. And then we uh, last week on March the 8th, we held uh, a listening session. Uh, Dr. Mitchell put that together so that we can hear from members of the community and understand what they believe we should add into the budget. Uh, if there was any, any stones that uh, were unturned, we did hear feedback from uh, significant members of the community and we are grateful to receive that feedback from them. And now we are here at this moment, uh, which we are having a review of the district's uh, preliminary budget. Next slide, please. Uh, just to ensure that we are all on the on the same, uh, we have the same level of understanding as we talk through the district's budget. Just thought it would be important to highlight some of the uh, budget categories and some of the terminology we use. Revenue, obviously, uh, meaning any money that are received by the district, and for us that would include uh, our local tax levy and state aid. Appropriations; uh, those are the funds or monies that we actually plan to spend. And those appropriations become expenditures. So if I plan to spend $2,000 to purchase equipment, that is just an appropriation. But once we execute that purchase, it then becomes an expenditure. Uh, below that, you'll see some of the most common uh, categories. When you break down the district's budget, we have our regular instruction, which includes the salaries uh, and teaching supplies, which includes textbooks and instructional technology special education, which is inclusive of salary supplies and power professionals, a school-based budget, uh, which may include remedial education, bilingual services, co-curricular. Uh, this includes after-school activities and also athletics. And under our non-instructional or undistributed uh, categories, we have our tuition, we have instructional support, general administration, maintenance and operations, transportation, benefits, equipment and capital outlay, and also uh, summer school. Next slide, please. Throughout the budget development process, we, we've uh, made sure that we've kept our eyes on major concerns uh, that we've, that, that we've uh, uncovered in the district. Some of these things are, are, are items that we've known about. They may, have, uh, may appear on uh, previous, previous budget presentations, uh, but want to take a moment to highlight what those areas of concerns are. Uh, the first is our facility upgrades, followed by deferred maintenance, curriculum changes. Uh, curriculum changes are often a, a good thing, but when they come from the state, they can also come in a form of what we consider to be an unfunded mandate. 
meaning that the state tells us we have to make a, a vast change or update curriculum this year, but they don't necessarily provide additional funding. So when you find yourself in that position, it can pose a challenge or concern for the district. Salary increases. Uh, as you know, we've just uh, uh, settled one contract uh, for the next three years. Now it's with the Plainfield Education Association. But uh, as we go out and we try to attract and attain the best talent, we have to be realistic and understand that salaries will increase as a result of that. And just with uh, basic cost of living increases, et cetera, we know one thing is guaranteed that salaries will continue to increase annually. And it's also a contractual obligation that the district has. The second is our staffing needs. We've talked about this a number of times during the course of the year. Uh, Mrs. Jones has provided details about the human resources department and their strategy for going out to recruit uh, teachers and filling some of the, the, the hard to fill vacancies that we have in the district. And the last piece of, is our benefit costs. Uh, chapter 44, uh, something that was introduced a few years ago. And with that, we now have uh, what's known as the New Jersey uh, Educators uh, Health Plan. And it really has changed the landscape in terms of the cost we, we uh, have to incur as a school district. On the chapter 44, the district uh, is taking on uh, a higher portion of the cost of health benefits. Uh, it used to be that an employee would pay a percentage of the insurance premium. However, under chapter 44, an employee will only pay a percentage of their salary. And there's a cap to that. One thing we know is that if an employee continues to work for our district, their salary will increase every year. However, it will get to a point in which they are capped off in terms of the percentage or the increase that they will make towards those health care contributions. Next slide, please. I will focus to building uh, this year's budget uh, has really been about uh, developing a structurally balanced budget. And a structurally balanced budget is one in which our recurring revenues are equal to our recurring expenditures. If we have misalignment there, that means that we have a structural imbalance. So to give you an example of what we would consider to be a structural uh, imbalance, if you take your household as an example, uh, your income that you make, give or take, is $5,000 per month. And let's say your bills are $5,000. I'm just trying to keep it round, right? Your revenues equal your expenses. But what happens if your expenses end up being $6,000, but your revenue is only $5,000? Sure. So we typically might make some changes, maybe go into our savings account, right, to cover that difference for that month. Now, it's fine if that's a one-time hit because it's an unexpected expenditure. But what happens if that becomes the norm? Right? That means you are then at that point possibly running a deficit or you are making uh, multiple withdrawals from your savings. It's only but so many withdrawals that you can make. So I'm happy to say that with this year's uh, budget, uh, we've been able to develop this proposed budget without making any withdrawals from reserve accounts and without using any fund balance, which is the district savings account. Next slide, please. This slide is a representation of the uh, district's total student enrollment. And um, the, uh, the video panel box is, is blocking a portion of it. Uh, however, if you are looking at your binder, you will see that the district's enrollment uh, has been on an upward trajectory. We've also received a demographic study earlier uh, this school year which indicated that the district has seen uh, 3% uh, growth annually on student enrollment. You'll also, you may also recall that in that demographic study, it was projected that enrollment for Plainfield Public Schools uh, will reach 8,412 students next year. So that is the reference point for this uh, enrollment projection going into the 2022-23 school year. Next slide, please. Now this slide uh, here shows uh, student enrollment, but it only shows it for our special education population. So it is very important for us to highlight that, obviously uh, making sure that we have the proper supports in place for those students, but also keeping in mind that in some instances, we have to uh, send students out of district and uh, to receive those services. And that comes with a price tag as well. 
Next slide, please. Here you will see uh, charter school enrollment here in the city of Plainfield. And this is a very, very important slide, very important uh, for us to keep in our minds. And we will spiral back to this figure uh, as we move forward in the presentation. But I think the biggest takeaway from this slide is that as the district's enrollment continues to increase, so does the enrollment for charter schools. At this point in time, the district is undergoing a residency verification um, process for all district students, and that also includes charter schools as well. So we do expect to see some shifts and some changes as we continue with that residency verification process. Next slide, please. Revenues. The district, uh, the district's revenue really comes from uh, four sources. Uh, the first source is the local tax levy, uh, followed by the state and federal aid that we receive, in addition to miscellaneous revenues and alternative funding methods. I think everyone is probably familiar with our local tax levy and the state and federal, federal aid. An example of uh, miscellaneous revenues could be facility rentals, as an example. Uh, also a refund, say the district may have overpaid for tuition in the prior school year, and then we receive a refund from, the, from that district in the upcoming school year. That's not something that we would have anticipated, nor would we have budgeted for that item. So when we receive it, we will book it as miscellaneous revenue. Alternative uh, funding methods uh, is very important for our district. And a great example of alternative funding methods for the Plainfield Public Schools is our E-rate. So every year there are opportunities uh, that, that uh, present themselves for us to uh, get reimbursed for certain expenditures. A lot of those expenditures fall under the realm of, of technology and communication. So thank you to uh, Mr. Payne and his team for working with the district and the business office to make sure that we are able to capture uh, those funds for the district. Next slide, please. Revenue analysis. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Thank you. It's going down to our, our bottom line, and then I'll kind of work out, work my way back into this number. So our total uh, projected and anticipated revenue for the district, and this is strictly for our general operating budget, is two hundred thirty-nine million five hundred ninety-five thousand five hundred and fifty-two dollars. Uh, this is an increase of roughly twenty-nine. Uh, million dollars for us overall. And I'd like to just unpack that briefly. So if we start with our local tax levy at, uh, at the top, you will see that the local tax levy uh, is remaining flat, flat. So there will be a 0% increase on the general fund local tax levy. Uh, we do not have any uh, projected revenues for tuition, but we are keeping miscellaneous revenues flat at $125,000. Feel comfortable uh, that we will be able to meet that target based on the uh, number of rentals that we have and what prior history has shown in our projections. Our total revenue from local sources is $26,143,540. Then moving on to our revenue from state and federal sources. Uh, extraordinary aid and all other forms of aid uh, remain flat with the exception of our equalization aid. Uh, the state Department of Education in the state of New Jersey continues to fine tune funding for school districts like Plainfield, and they're working very diligently to continue to bump up the state aid, particularly on the equalization that we receive. So uh, for that area, we actually received an increase of $36.8 million, and that is an increase of 19.8% in that particular area of our state aid. Uh, if you go down to our Medicaid reimbursement, this is a federal uh, revenue source, and this is the amount that the district can possibly recoup uh, by submitting uh, Medicaid reimbursement. Dr. Filipados and her team, they do a great job of making sure we capture as much of that revenue as possible. We do see a decrease uh, from the state, uh, the state's projection uh, going down uh, $9,526 or roughly 3.19%. Uh, 
we are not using any budgeted fund balance, nor are we utilizing any, any of our capital reserve funds or our maintenance, our maintenance reserves. And these are very important items for us to uh, take note of. We are not using our capital reserve because our capital reserve has been drawn down. You may recall that our auditors communicated this and the same thing for our maintenance reserve. We're, we are not using our budgeted fund balance. Honestly, there is no justification for us to go in to use any budgeted fund balance, given the amount of state aid that we are receiving this school year. Next slide, please. This is again, our revenue analysis, just putting it in a, a different, different, uh, just sharing it in a different format. Uh, that pie chart uh, represents the total revenue analysis for our general fund. And as you will see uh, from that slide, our state aid accounts for 89% of all total revenues that we receive for our general operating fund, followed by our local tax levy, which is roughly 11%, and Medicaid reimbursement and miscellaneous re revenue, those are less than uh, 1%. Next slide, please. In developing the proposed budget, we really wanted to, again, assure that we had a structurally balanced budget and also uh, that we developed a budget that did not further tax the residents of Plainfield. So again, as you will see, our tax levy for our general fund, that's remaining flat. However, for debt services, there is a slight increase on that tax levy, and that is for our uh, Fund 40 debt service and that's going to increase by approximately $196,123. The district has no control over the debt service component. The debt service is the repayment for, uh, for a bond referendum that the district did a few, a few years ago. So we can't control how the tax levy is, is imposed on that particular item, but what we do control is how the tax levy is imposed for the general fund. Next slide, please. Taking a look at our special revenues, when presenting the, uh, the preliminary budget, we really don't uh, dig too deep into the special revenue components, and there's a reason why. These numbers uh, shift, obviously, but we, we uh, do our best to make an accurate projection. And the way that we arrived at uh, the revenue for uh, Fund 20 or our special revenue sources, we took 85% of the current year allocation for all of our entitlement grants. So that would include uh, preschool program, Title I, two, three, and four, IDEA Part, Part B, and also our vocational education. So we, we took 85% of that current allocation and we used that as a conservative number to build out a projection of what we will receive for fiscal year 22-23. However, those allocations don't become available to the district until, in, until later in the spring. When those uh, allocations are made available to us, we do go in and change the figures, and the board also approves the plan that the district brings forward in terms of how those funds will be spent. As we shift down to CARES Act, our Coronavirus Relief Fund, uh, CARESA Act, which is ESSER II, we have already received those allocations, but those grants were spread out over the course of multiple school years. So what that means is we are currently drawing down from those grants. We will not be receiving additional revenues. So we basically built out a projection to show what we believe we will have at the end of the school year and how we will carry those funds over to the next year. Uh, the plans have already been approved by the district for those funds. And again, those plans were for multiple years and not just one school year. Right, next slide, please. Now let's get into our uh, appropriations. So one thing I wanna note on this slide, you will see that the appropriations, there's a $1 million difference on this slide in terms of appropriations and the revenue. So I wanna point that out. I don't want you to think that the business administrator can't count but we do receive a transfer from our special revenues and it's been done, uh, I think as long as people in this room can remember, 
that's a transfer that's done. So we, we can't book that as revenue. It is a transfer. When that transfer is made, it's an additional $1 million that goes towards whole school reform or our school-based budgets. So with that transfer, that actually increases the general fund appropriations and expenditures to 240 million as opposed to 239. Just so you understand that. I can unpack it if anybody has additional questions, but it is the same thing that's been done by my predecessor in past years. So we're not changing any practice of the district. Just wanted to make sure I highlighted that. Uh, we have, again, uh, for our grants and entitlements, uh, 43.5 million. Our debt service is 2.2 million, giving us total appropriation of 286 million, 335,108 dollars. Next slide, please. The district's largest expenditure, salaries and benefits. No way around it. We have to have highly qualified and uh, trained individuals to help run and lead the school district. So as you can see, uh, we are projecting our salaries and benefits uh, to equal or reach $136.5 million, uh, which would equate to roughly 56.74% of the district's total general operating budget. And that is uh, a reduction in terms of the percentage of salaries and benefits uh, to the general fund budget. Back in the 2019-20 school year, that was 63.93%. And we can attribute that uh, decline in terms of the percentage. We can attribute that to the additional revenue that we are receiving in, in this year's budget. Next slide, please. This is a snapshot of the district's appropriations. And starting from the uh, column on the left, we have all of the district's programs listed. We also have the 2021 actual expenditures, uh, which were 173 million. The 2021-22 fiscal year, our appropriations in the general fund are 211 million. And moving forward with the 2022-23 budget, we see that our uh, projected appropriations are 240.5 million. And that is a difference of $29 million or roughly 12%. Next slide, please. Here are the appropriations in a different format, uh, just showing how that pie is actually broken down. You will see that uh, charter school uh, payments, uh, there's an increase there of 7 million. That is that pink, uh, pinkish piece of the pie, of roughly 19% of the district's uh, overall general fund operating budget. We also have uh, roughly $41 million in the district's in, uh, projected benefit costs and $43.8 million, $43 million, which is the blue piece of the pie towards the top. Those are the uh, projected appropriations to run the district's regular programs. Next slide, please. Can't talk about the district's uh, budget without making mention, uh, without bringing up the district's debt. So as you can see, for the 21-22 fiscal year, our total debt payments will equal 4.8 million. And that is inclusive of the district's uh, bond debt, which is currently being repaid, and also uh, the district's Apple lease. As you know, we have a one-to-one -one, uh, initiative here in the district, and the district renegotiated the uh, lease agreement with Apple during last fiscal year. So we expect uh, to make our last payment on the Apple lease in fiscal year 24-25. And our last payment on the district's bond series will be made in the 26-27 school year. And we will uh, see a decrease from 4.8 million this year in our total debt payments to 4.3 million in 22-23 and also 23-24 in 24-25, when the Apple lease falls off, that debt payment will further uh, decrease to about 2.1, 2.2 million. And we can safely say that the district will be debt free uh, at the end of the 26-27 fiscal year. Next slide, please. It's just a, a different uh, view 
to show uh, the decrease in those payments. And again, it's, a, it's good news that the district uh, will be debt free at the end of the 26, 27 fiscal year. Next slide, please. So what are our key drivers for this budget? So salaries and benefits uh, being the, uh, the category in which the district uh, spends the majority of its resources comes in at 94.8 million, followed by a $45.6 million payment to charter schools for increased enrollment. We also have $41.8 $41 million in benefit costs and projected appropriations of $16.1 million for tuition. That $16.1 million for tuition is inclusive of our out of district tuition and other tuition costs. That other tuition category uh, includes vocational uh, uh, students. So students who attend Union County Votech who reside in the city of Plainfield, we do pay the bill for those students to attend the vocational schools as well. And then $4.8 million for our long-term debt. Next slide, please. A key focus for the administration is maintaining the district's facilities. We've had uh, uh, some some great news this year. I think we've also heard, had some difficult news with some, some news that we didn't necessarily wanna hear at certain times, right? The replacement of boilers, uh, we've had some issues during the course of the year where we've had to double down on the support from our facilities and grounds department to make sure heat was working and operational in, in our buildings. So this year we are we are going to continue to make sure that we have a concerted effort to support uh, our facilities and grounds department and making sure that we're able to properly maintain the facilities that we have uh, and make the necessary repairs something that we have to do, we're obligated to do it. Uh, and it's something that makes our staff and our students feel good when they come into our facilities. So on this slide, what uh, you're actually looking at is each one of our district facilities and our pro- proposed facilities that uh, will be coming online in 2023, you're looking at the square footage for each one of those buildings, along with the year that that uh, facility was erected. The yellow and red indicate the district's older facilities. So anything that's in the yellow to red, uh, those facilities uh, were erected between 75 and 90 years ago. Any of the facilities that are highlighted in red, they're they're more than a century old. So it just kind of goes to show how old some of our facilities are and the fact that they really do need some TLC and we just want to make sure that we keep our eyes on that. And the Charles and Anna Booker School is again slated to uh, come online and be available for us uh, for the 23-24 school year. Next slide, please. Facility maintenance. So how do we plan on addressing our facility needs? Well, it's really all about us uh, executing the district's comprehensive maintenance plan and doing that with fidelity. So the comprehensive maintenance plan is something that the that the board approved. It's going on to our uh, county office where they've reviewed it as well. And they provide the checks and balances. So any of the projected costs uh, that were that were listed in that comprehensive maintenance plan, the county office will will review our budget to make sure we have those minimum appropriation lines established in our budget. They don't want us cutting corners. They want to make sure that we are making the investments like we say we do. So here, these are some of the more common action items that uh, have to be taken or executed upon when we think about our district's comprehensive maintenance plan. We have door and hardware requirements throughout the district. Uh, We have required maintenance on our HVAC, HVAC system. So that includes that's heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. We also have uh, to repair and replace plumbing fixtures. Uh, You will see on tonight's agenda that there is a resolution for the board to approve the acceptance of uh, grants from the uh, New Jersey uh, Board of Public Utilities. Those grants will help us in offsetting the cost to upgrade uh, the plumbing fixtures. When we say upgrade, 
We're talking about upgrading our plumbing fixtures and upgrading our bathrooms so that they meet us where we are today. So we're talking touchless appliances, etc. Those are the kind of things that the state wants us to uh, implement or, or, or add into our facilities. And we're receiving a grant funding, so we're definitely going to make sure that we continue to do that. And then again, repairing our heating and cooling systems. And our total uh, appropriations for facilities and grounds, specifically in the area of maintenance, that is broken down between custodial and maintenance. Two different groups of two different groups of employee, but one department. When you think of a, an employee who is uh, caring for the maintenance of the district, those are the employees who are coming out and actually fixing the HVAC system, et cetera. Custodial staff, they have a different role of responsibility. But our projected appropriations are 12.9 million in that area. Next slide, please. With the additional revenue uh, that we receive from the state, uh, and again, keeping in mind that the district has already depleted its maintenance reserve account and its capital reserve, we are able to appropriate $12.2 million towards capital projects. So you may ask, well, what are these capital projects? As you may recall, the district also approved earlier this school year uh, through the award through an RFP, which allowed us to bring in an architectural firm to execute the long range facilities plan. That is currently in process right now. We expect to have a presentation to the board sometime around May. We will be uh, selecting projects from that long range facilities plan because that's, you know, that's how the process works. However, we do know that the projects that are listed here will will be projects that are in fact listed on the long range facilities plan. So we're being forward thinking in our planning and our approach. We know that we need boiler replacements, remember Hubbard Middle School. Uh, we also know that we need electrical power upgrades throughout the district facilities. So as we talk about uh, adding HVAC units and spaces that don't currently have uh, air conditioning, there's a requirement to upgrade the district's uh, power supply so that it can actually accommodate that. If you think about it, if you had an older home and you put that AC in there, you blow that fuse and find yourself in the basement. So we can't go and change fuses here, but you know we can make sure that we have uh, our uh, electrical power upgraded. As you know, the, swim the Plainfield High School swimming pool is currently down. It's been offline since uh, Hurricane Ida. Hurricane Ida really accelerated the need to, uh, to repair the district swimming pool. All of the uh, mechanical equipment that's underneath the swimming pool, it was flooded. So that is non-operational. At this point, we're still in a phase of working out how the insurance company is going to support the district and reimburse us for any costs. And that is prolonging our ability to get out and actually start the work to do the repair. Uh, we will have initial cost projections by the end of next week that we plan to share uh, through the Finance Operations Committee for a review before it comes to the full board. The next piece uh, for capital projects are univent replacements. Univent replacements are those metal boxes that you see in classrooms or where the heat comes. Those are univents. So each one of those has a price tag of roughly thirty dollars to $35,000. So when we have issues in the district and you hear that heat is not working in the classroom and we say we have to replace a motor, that means going into that unit, taking it out, getting a replacement part for it. So we're doing assessments now to determine exactly how many units need to be replaced, but we are planning for that. And then the last is continuing with our uh, bathroom upgrades. Next slide, please. These are the proposed uh, positions, new positions for fiscal year 22-23. Uh, the first, there's one uh, executive director position that's being proposed, and that is to provide support uh, K-12 level. Uh, in the past, there were executive directors here uh, in the district. This is something that uh, is being requested for fiscal year 22-23. We have one supervisor of visual and performing arts, and that is a compliance. That is pos a position that is required for compliance for QSAC. We have three assistant principal positions uh, that are being proposed. 
and that is to help provide additional support, particularly uh, across our middle schools, because of the increased enrollment that we have. And there is this is not an arbitrary request, but in looking at the enrollments of, of those particular schools, if their enrollment has reached 750 students or more, uh, the admin, our administration would like to offer uh, to have assistant principals at those locations to help support the principals. And those are standard of uh, best practices in terms of the ratio uh, for student uh, to admins. The next piece is uh, having six technology teachers and technology specialists. Uh, you know, a few weeks ago, there were some conversations about some changes with, uh, within the technology department. The addition of these uh, new positions will provide additional support for the technology department and also give them an opportunity to have someone dedicated in some of the schools, particularly the middle schools, to give the day-to-day -day support that some of our school leaders say that they need from a technology perspective. So in total, that will be uh, six proposed positions to help move forward and uh, better align the technology department to what the current needs are in the district. We have two math and ELA coaches, uh, which will provide district-wide support. Two special education teachers, that is again a compliance matter. Two guidance counselors to also support the increased enrollment, uh, mental health, additional support needs for students have become even more prevalent. And we have to make sure that we have enough bodies to provide that additional support to our students. Our five security guards, uh, which would allow us to right size the department and also have further conversation about adding additional shifts, which would help us reduce the overtime costs for that department. Very, very important for us. If we have an event uh, that's an after hours event and security is requested, at this point in time, those individuals nine times out of 10 are, are, are receiving overtime to cover those events because we don't have a second shift in place right now. Uh, the next is uh, three secretary level positions for our accounts payable and purchasing department. That again uh, is a compliance matter. In our district, we have, we just, we have to separate duties. We can't have individuals who are keying in invoices. They can't be the same people who are issuing purchase orders. Those departments of functions have to be separated so that we can have checks and balances. Uh, we have two positions under facilities and grounds. Uh, one is to have a, an, uh, HVAC, another HVAC specialist to help us with our facilities and maintenance. And we have uh, also uh, proposing a position for a warehouse specialist. And that would allow the district to move forward with the plan to centralize all deliveries that come into the district so we can properly maintain the district's inventory system, et cetera. And then the last piece is uh, three additional bus drivers. We know we continue to, uh, to hire our bus drivers to help right size the department. And we believe that by hiring three new bus drivers next fiscal year, that would allow us to bring some of our transportation services, additional transportation services back in house. So those, the cost of uh, hiring those bus drivers would be covered through the savings that we will realize here in the district. Next slide, please. Uh, new programs and initiatives. So in this budget, you will see uh, that there is funding available for curriculum updates. We have new textbook series. Uh, the district obviously started this last school year. And to continue with that, we're making that, that additional investment this year and also leveraging grant funds. Thank you to, uh, to Dr. Gordon and her team for all of their hard work. Uh, you will see increased staff support as indicated by the uh, new position request. We will have uh, new instruments, which will be purchased for our music programs. We will see uh, a tech infrastructure upgrade. And that really means uh, upgrading the fiber that we have that feeds the internet uh, to our schools. So that's something that Mr. Payne and his team I believe that we really need to further secure the district's network and to make sure that our internet is reliable, considering that we have doubled down on the use of technological devices in the district. And then the last uh, initiative is our facilities maintenance, which obviously is very important to us. Next slide, please. So 
budget highlights. There are uh, again th three things that I want uh, I would like you all to uh, remember about this budget, this preliminary uh, budget. One, there is a zero percent general fund tax levy increase, which I think is extremely important. Uh, it shows that the district and the board is really in tune with the community. We understand what's happening right now. And we have the opportunity to develop a, a structurally balanced budget and to not uh, put that on the back of our taxpayers. The second is that we have roughly $620,000 in bank cap that is set to expire. Bank cap, also known as the unauthorized uh, tax authority, those, those are funds that the district could have used in prior years uh, through the general fund tax levy, but for whatever reason did not. And when you don't use those funds, they get put away in a bank. That's why it's called bank cap. And if you ever want to use bank cap, there are certain uh, categories that uh, or situations that would allow us to use bank cap. And in doing so, the district would be allowed to go above the 2% tax levy by going into bank cap. We are not proposing to use any bank cap. Therefore, that $623,000 that is available for us to use, it will expire, meaning that the district can't go back next year and say, oops, we made a mistake. We want to use the bank cap. So that means that is another item in which we are not putting onto the backs of our taxpayers. And the last item is obviously, obviously, obviously uh, our increase in state aid been very helpful for us as a district. Uh, it's going to go a long way. And that totals $36.8 million. Next slide, please. I will uh, reiterate uh, what we started with at the beginning of this presentation, which, uh, which is the budget process and the next steps. Again, tonight is the review of the preliminary budget proposal. <laughs> The next steps after approval will be to submit this preliminary budget to our county office for review by March 28th, and then to continue discussions with the finance operations uh, board subcommittee, and then to hold a public hearing and adoption of the budget on April 26, 2022, and keeping in mind that the deadline for the budget adoption is May 7th, 2022. Again, uh, I'll now take any uh, questions and comments. Next slide, please. Mr. Hassan, before we take um, questions and comments, I would just like to propose a special meeting um, if the board is interested because we do have a work and study and business meeting on the 12th. And I believe the budget is super important that it deserves its own time. So I would like um, to propose either April 26th or May 3rd for a special meeting to adopt the, the budget. Board member Pyle. Are you saying adopt what we just what we just listened to just now or? Yes, so. Um, like the deadline is. May 7th. To, today. No, it's today. So let me uh, clarify, if I, if I may, Madam yes. uh, Chair. So to clarify, What's been shared tonight, this is the starting point. This is just a preliminary budget proposal. Approving the preliminary budget proposal tonight, that just gives me the authorization as a school business administrator to submit it to the county office for advertisement and for all of the other components. There are a lot of technical pieces that the county office has to review. And once they give the approval or go ahead, then we advertise that proposed budget, and then we have the actual budget hearing. And at the budget hearing, which uh, Madam President is proposing a date of either April 26th or May 3rd, that is when the budget will be adopted and will become final. Between now and then, we have, I wanna say all the time in the world, but we do have time so that we can go back and forth on any of the items in this proposed budget. Nothing is final. So just want to make that, that clear. Tonight's the starting point for us. Okay, that's that's the way I know it. But I thought you were saying to postpone this. Okay. No. 
And also, um, it's very important for the operations committee to meet with Mr. Hassan before we um, meet for the special meeting, either on the 26th or May 3rd. So at this time, if you would like to have a special meeting for the budget on April 26th, which is a Tuesday, can you please raise your hand? Oh, look at your calendars. I'm sorry. Yes. All right. So April 26, we will hold a special meeting at 6:30. And again, operations committee, please make sure to meet with Mr. Hassan before then. anybody have any questions board member Pyle, then board member anderson person and mrs blackburn okay mr son that was excellent that was very good and i love the presentation i always love photography and it's beautiful um i just have a question uh, just a few questions regarding the charter school with um uh, College Achieve, they have a high school in North Plainfield, and it's now about to go to 12th grade. Do we pay for those high school students, even though they're in North Plainfield? Yes. Not only do we pay for those students to attend, we also transport them. Right. Can you explain why? Yes. So charter schools have um, in their in their charters, they have regional acceptance clauses, which means that as a charter school, I can be located in Plainfield, but I can also accept students, not only from Plainfield, but North Plainfield, South Plainfield, et cetera. I don't know what the details are for that particular uh, charter school, um, but you also don't have to be located in that particular town. So they do have a charter that allows them to accept students from Plainfield, and if I were students to choose to attend that school, they're able to do so. But you're not paying for the, if the North Plainfield kids go there. You have to no, we don't pay okay. for North Plainfield, just Plainfield. Just Plainfield, yes. okay. And the other thing was in uh, Plainfield High School, there is a bathroom, which they call the prison bathroom. Is that, during Ottman's time, that was supposed to be upgraded. Will that ever be upgraded? Or I know the capital funds is not are not there, but does that mean that bathroom will continue to be the prison bathroom? No, we, we will not have any prisoner bathrooms in Plainfield Public Schools. Again, anymore, because it's there. So what what's the plan for that? So we're currently wrapping up first round of uh, bathroom renovations now. Uh, we just finished Cedar Brook. We're moving on to Hubbard. And we're making our rounds. The Plainfield, Plainfield High School bathrooms are slated as a part of the project for this year as well. And one last question, that bond, do you know what that bond was used for? That bond, if, the, if there was any bond referendum that was done for the district, it would have been for facilities. Just a bond for facilities? There's no other, can't see any other reason why. And the, you don't know the total amount? Oh, yeah. I don't have that. You don't have here, what the total amount was. But I can was. look at it. I can give you what the total amount was and what we've paid out. I can share the debt, the debt repayment schedule where we are. But the question is not included on that. So I have to find what the actual question was for that. Okay, thank you. Good job. Board member Anderson Person. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Hassan, on, um, on, on my slide, it's page 31, where you were going over the new positions that were being proposed. Yes. So are we able to um, have identified for us exactly what buildings, I know the executive director's position is administrator's position, but within these other um, uh, numbers of positions, are we able to identify what specific school buildings we're talking about with these new positions? Sure, that can be uh, provided. Yes. Also, in your binders, I did keep uh, 
try my best to stay within what the board had been used to receiving. I was told that you wanted some of the reports in the more of a summarized format. So what you will find is a copy of the district's position control roster that highlights all of the current uh, vacancies and any of the new positions. So as you go through the roster, if it's a new position, it says new next to it. That information is there and it's broken down by location as well. Blackburn, I just had a clarifying question on the, uh, you said the special meeting, is that the budget hearing or are you proposing to have a separate meeting prior to your formal budget hearing? I just wasn't, I wasn't clear during the discussion. When, when Mr. Hassan spoke, I assumed it was your, and according to the presentation, that was your budget hearing that has to be advertised to the public. You mentioned some kind of a, a special meeting. I didn't know whether that was the same, so that you're just gonna have the budget hearing or you wanted to have a, a, an interim meeting. Thank you. Um, I was thinking the hearing and the adoption. Okay. One meeting. Okay. And it'll be advertised accordingly. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that that was the formal budget hearing because the rules that go along with that. Thank you. Other questions on the budget? Board, oh, board member. Um, Mr. Sonner, thank you so much. Your presentation was thorough. It answered any questions that I may have had, and I'm sure it addressed any questions that the board members had. Um, and you did a really great job. So thank you so much. Thank you. Board member Anderson person. Yes, just wanted to tack back. Um, you had mentioned in the beginning parts of the presentation um, that uh, Dr. Mitchell had conducted a listening session um, along with you and the community gave you feedback. Is that is that represented in here or? So what? we don't have it broken out in that way. Okay. Uh, just to share some of the things we heard during the listening session, uh, we did hear uh, concerns uh security was one of the things that came up uh obviously additional support that's needed uh inside of the schools hard to fill vacancies which has been a constant conversation for so i don't think that there was anything that we heard during the listening session that was different than what the administration knew uh going into you know this budget development cycle it was really, you know, again, an opportunity to hear from members of the community, uh, but there wasn't anything that was, again, different from what we already knew and we had been discussing internally. Okay, so a follow-up to that, thank you. Um, you know about how many people from the public were able to join in on that listening session? And the reason why I ask is um, after that, if there's any plans to allow the public to give feedback again, besides that one session. I don't have the document you want to. It was about 55 people on, and when we have the uh, the hearing and adoption, uh, parent, parents or community members will get the opportunity to speak again at that meeting. Okay. And so this is going to be, this presentation we see from Mr. Hassan is on the website, so the public can look at this. Yes, it, it, the proposed budget will be posted after tonight. Okay. And I just have one more question. Oh. Um, with respect to the charter schools, you did show us the projections and we could see there was a steady increase in terms of the amount of money that the district is paying out for charter schools. Now, with respect to the state aid that we're receiving, is that money already factored in in terms of those payments that we would pay out to the charter school? Has it already been? Yes. So that's, that is factored in as one of the appropriations in the budget. Okay. It is, uh, if you go to the appropriation slide, it is it's literally the last line item that you see here, charter schools. And this increased over the last three years is going up from 28 million in the 2021 school year to 45.6 million for next school year. And uh, 
uh, again, is it, am I still correct in terms of, but what's the percentage um, when the child leaves our school district and goes over to charter? Is it that uh, how much 90% of the money yep. so is 90, 10, 90, 10. Um, okay. but that 10% that we keep, they say that that 10% is supposed to help us cover our legacy costs. Um, but the reality is, even though charter school students aren't in our buildings, they are still utilizing services from the district, right? So one piece is transportation. Another component is that charter school students are eligible to join Plainfield uh, Public Schools athletic teams. So the cost to purchase uniforms, refurbish uniforms, et cetera. We also provide busing for those af for athletes from charter schools to get uh, to and from school and then to and from practice as well. So they are in fact using those those services. So 10% is not a lot. And thank you. Your presentation was very good. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Board member Webb. Yeah, good job, Mr. Hassan. Thank you, sir. Um, on page 17, under appropriations and general fund, you said that it increased by $1 million due to a transfer. Yeah, so uh, what I was explaining here is that if you look at our revenue slide, right, obviously, if as the BA, if I'm uh, making a presentation to you all, I know somebody would have went back and said, hey, the revenue doesn't doesn't equal the expenditure, right? That's a problem. So we are receiving $230 million in revenue. However, every year the district makes a transfer from the special services fund from the entitlement grants. And that million dollars goes towards the school-based budgets. So I cannot book that as revenue because if I booked it as revenue on the general fund side and under the special revenue side, I will be double booking the same fund, the same amount of money. So instead of booking it that way, we bring it in under special revenue, then we make a transfer to the general fund. And when we make that transfer, that allows us to increase our expenses by a million dollars. That's what took us from the 239 to the 240 million. So that information is included in the previous slide somewhere. Yeah, it is included here. And as we have the conversations, uh, we dump into the committee conversations. I think one of the things that might be helpful is uh, you know, having some dialogue about the special revenues and how that's shaped up for the district. Yeah. I, I figured I'd get more information, but I just wanted to answer for the public. Yep. Thank you. Right. Board member Anderson person. Um, Mr. Hassan, one of the things when you were showing us the slide, I don't have the page number, well, we were showing that our fund balances were low mm -hmm. uh, in the two areas. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, what would be the district's plan to try to build back those fund balances that are low? Yeah, so that is a, I mean, that's a really, really great question. The first thing that we're doing is building a budget without making any withdrawals from our fund balance, right? So that means if we use $7.7 .7 million or $7.6 million last year in our fund balance, if we would, if we did not receive any additional state aid and our revenue stayed flat, that meant that we would have started the budget process in the hole looking for $7.6 million to fill into the budget. The fact that we receive additional state aid, we don't have to do that. What we've built up in our fund balance, uh, will stay there, we're not touching it. But as we move forward and we close out this fiscal year, uh, I've already talked to the auditors and about helping support us developing the right resolution so that we can earmark funds to go <laughs> into our capital reserves and our maintenance reserves. And the way we do that is by effectively managing the district's budget during the fiscal year, right? Doubling down, making sure that the expenditures that, that we are making are things that we need. So every time a, res, uh, a requisition comes through, uh, if it's something that comes through for curriculum and instruction, yeah, a director submits that, but guess what? It goes to Mr. Williams and he reviews that first and he's going down and he's looking at that requisition and he's saying, is this a valid expenditure? Is this something that we need in this fiscal year? 
or is this something that you should build in your budget for next fiscal year? And when we have those conversations, you know, I think it, it helps us reduce costs. We're also leveraging the use of co-ops, which is extremely important and beneficial for us. Using the co-ops is like going to Costco. You, you know, you pay your membership fee to go to Costco, and as a result, you get to take advantage of all of those discounts. When we join co-ops, it's the same thing for us because we're members. We get to take advantage of all of the different cost savings that are available to members. Um, in addition to that, uh, we are leveraging alternative revenue sources, grants. We have one uh, grant <clears throat> award that's on the board agenda for approval tonight. So receiving those additional funds, that offsets an expenditure for the district. So if we continue to do those kind of things, uh, it's, it's multifaceted. But if we continue to do those things and do them well and efficiently, I think we'll continue to be able to build up these reserve accounts. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other questions? I think we're all set. Thank you so much for that great presentation, Mr. Hassan. Thank you, Madam President.